What's up everybody, Kevin Barnett here, Carbide 3D Studio. We recently launched the Stingray, our all new drag knife. It'll open a wide variety of new materials for you to explore, but the best is the ability to make stencils. I'm gonna take a $2 sheet of poster board plastic from Michaels and turn it into a multi-leveled stencil set to make an American flag. I'll show you how to do it, let's go. First you have to put down your cutting mat. I have this giant one that I really like. Then get your plastic poster board. This is two bucks, 22 by 28 from Michaels. Incredibly cheap, really thin, perfect for this application. Throw the stingray out, get your blade height set. Blade height is not terribly critical here with no backer. You simply cut through the plastic and into the mat. Next thing you need to take your art and dissect it. And when you're dissecting your art, you're gonna have to think about the color and the layer. What color goes with what design layer? How many different spray colors am I gonna do? In this case, it's just three colors. So I need one stencil for each color. There will be red stripes, white stripes and stars, and a blue background. You'll have to think in the appropriate order as well, which one's gonna go down first, which one's gonna go down second. One of the tricky things about making stencils is you have to recreate the negative space in your artwork. You have to pick apart the individual details that usually are defined by one box simply being spaced apart from another box. You're going to need that box in between of a different color. So I'm recreating those spaces here throughout the American flag. Next, remove that outer border because everything should be defined by the different pieces you've set throughout your stencils. You don't need one complete outer rectangle. Let's get to actual cutting. I recoded the cutting surface in Tacket over and over to make sure that over this wide area, I was gonna get full adhesion. Balancing the tackiness required to keep your part stable while cutting versus allowing it to also release is tricky. Cutting the stars. This is where people have done a whole bunch of testing in terms of the corners. In this project, I'm simply using a contour with no offset for the stingray. In this material, I've come away impressed. The knife is able to change directions quickly enough to create what I think is an acceptable amount of sharpness on these star corners, and the stars aren't that big. In our Stingray introduction video, I offered a couple of software solutions that will help you create those exact sharp corners. Next up are the long lines, simple boxes, easy cutting. Here I'm doing my best curling sweeper imitation. Not dangerous with a drag knife. This is a satisfying process. Peel up your part. I probably could have set the drag knife a little bit longer. It would have come out a little crisper, but weeding the stars is easy. They just pop right out of there. The registration mark off to the side will also pop right out. This is easy work. Peel up the third piece. This is the red layer. We're ready to go to paint. Here comes the fun part. This was done vertically on cardboard as a test immediately after cutting. I was really impatient with the whole thing. I wanted to get to it. Many of you probably know that feeling with a project. First up is the blue background along with the registration marks to get started. That'll help you align things. These aren't necessary. You can find a bunch of different ways to align things. This is the way I chose to do it this time. Right away you get a feel for the street art nature of this process. If you want to find a way to pin down all the edges of your stencil, you're going to get sharper lines. You can experiment with that with different projects and adhesive options. Next up was red. And I was just going quick too. No time for the paint to dry. Just get right after it. Peel it up. Things are starting to take shape. Five minutes later, I was back with the white and I added one extra piece of tape given the number of features that were being sprayed in. I didn't press on it too hard. Again, impatience and partially wet paint. I wanted to see what this looked like. At this point, I was getting pretty excited about the possible results. I threw a little extra on the stars and then admired my work. This is something you couldn't do on the Shape Oko before the Stingray. Every time you step into the shop and use your machine, you're gonna do some learning. When you put a brand new tool to the test, you're gonna do a lot of learning. And that's gonna be the case here with the Carbide Stingray. I'm excited about it for the ability to make stencils alone. That would justify the tool for me. I have a lot of interesting ideas about multi-layer stencils that are far bigger than three. I also have heard people talking about cutting out pieces in thin plastic to then put into an epoxy pour. That's an interesting idea. I think you're going to open some windows and doors you hadn't thought of before in your house of CNC. Whatever you think of, whatever you do with the Stingray, hit us up on Instagram at Carbide3D. Let us know what you're making, the challenges, 
the things you conquered, what you think you can do moving forward. We're always up to see where you've gone. And we'll see you here in the studio once again.